Every year, 600,000 Americans are released from prison. Unfortunately, almost two-thirds of these returnees are rearrested on new charges within three years, many in the first few months post-release. And while prisons offer programs designed to help men and women successfully return to society, most of these programs have been ineffective, worked too slowly, or in a few instances, have actually made re-entry even more difficult. It's time to rethink prisoner re-entry. The United States incarcerates more of its own citizens than any other nation. Around 2 million people currently reside in our jails and prisons, and around 4.7 million Americans are on probation and parole. Every day, about 1,600 people are released back into our neighborhoods and communities, and more than 1,000 of them will soon be back in prison. Many research studies have been conducted in an attempt to understand what is and what isn't working in prisoner reentry programs. Disconcertingly, most programs don't work. It turns out some individuals do better with less intervention. Could it be that no treatment is the most effective remedy? We don't know, but the effectiveness of no treatment is revealing. The personal motivation of those returning from prison is probably what leads them to recovery. Too much treatment and at the wrong time or with the wrong services can make people feel helpless instead of capable. So how could we build on that insight? I propose combining the individual practices that have been shown to reduce criminal thoughts and behaviors, substance abuse treatment and mental health services, for instance, with a re-entry strategy that relies mainly on the innate motivation of the returning citizens themselves. A major part of this approach would be cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT. For the uninitiated, CBT is a mental health treatment that can help people change their behavior by addressing trauma and dysfunctional thought patterns. So what would our reentry program look like? We'd offer program participants the opportunity to join voluntary specialized CBT units. Participants in our CBT programs would be immersed in activities designed to help them heal from earlier traumatic experiences and build stronger decision-making skills. Simultaneously, reentry coaches and case managers would work with prisoners to develop participant-led action plans tailored to their unique needs, recognizing the agency and individual circumstances of incarcerated people. These plans would help connect the aspiration to avoid criminal behavior with the supports and services that will actually reduce the risk of crime. Once participants complete their CBT and reentry planning, they would receive a certificate of completion and access to a reentry support account to help pay for the critical services identified in their reentry plan. Upon release, the returning citizen would then have the behavioral tools and the financial resources to successfully navigate their reentry journey. But the responsibility for doing so would largely be their own. Much has been tried in the field of rehabilitation and reentry that has resulted in less than encouraging results. But researchers, policymakers, and concerned citizens can't give up. Instead, we need to recommit to innovative solutions. After decades of disappointment, such an experimental and entrepreneurial mindset may be the only way to break free of policy deadlock. While only a piece of a larger policy puzzle, empowering returning citizens to make their own choices and pursue their own recovery can help us make a better nation for all Americans. To learn more about AEI's new book, Rethinking Reentry, check out the link in the description below. Also, let us know what other topics you'd like AEI scholars to cover on Rethink Tank. And be sure to subscribe for more videos and research from AEI.